Welcome back to the studio for race number two, the preview of the second race, which sets off the place accumulator. It's at Hollywood Bets, Scottsville, the capital, Peter Maritzburg, 13 35, 25 to 2. 1200 meters, it's a juvenile plate this time for the fillies. Graham, some beautifully bred fillies here, some horses that bring some fair form into the race. Number three, Rock on Philly, is a horse that uh, I, I, I can't say sets the standard because there's so many unknown quantities here. But number three, Rock on Philly, is my first choice. Gavin Van Zale's horse for Drakenstein, Stud, Warren Kennedy. Really, really, really impressed me on debut. I know there's been eight runners, zero winners out of that form line. Imba Jeje hasn't won yet. But the way that she did it on debut really made me stand up and take notice. She was very impressive on debut. I'll give you that. Number three, Rock and Philly was impressive. I'm also very impressed with the daughter of Rafif, number 13, Civil Rights. Narrowly beaten on debut, but put the record straight in her second start. But she did beat, again, Dance My Lord, who's uh, struggling to win. So just how good number 13, Civil Rights is, is open to question. Once again, Fanny Bronkost, uh, Warren is in town with a well-bred daughter of Futura, number seven, Tinder Dry. She is in fact the favorite, but a weak favorite at seven to two. Uh, number three, Rock and Philly at four to one. We'll chat about number one, Fearless Kitty. That's at nine to two alongside number 13, Civil Rights at nine to two. Uh, then number two, Aisling at 11 to two and uh, nine opening shower at eight to one, double figures and better the balance. Let's chat about number one, Fearless Kitty. And what's interesting for me is that Glenn Cotson has a first time in the opening event, number 15, Illicit Kiss with Kanye Sakai aboard, that appears to have attracted some initial support. We'll have to wait and see if that follows through. Here he's got Anton Marcus riding this two-year-old daughter of Duke of Marmalade. Well-bred, but not bred to sprint. Bred for a bit further, but nonetheless, Open 13 to 2, those odds have been trimmed into 9 to 2. So Glenn Cotson's got a first timer attracting support in race 1, he's got a first timer attracting support in race 2. Again, you're going to have to wait and see as the market settles down whether there's a follow through on number 1 Fearless Kitty because certainly on pedigree it would be a bit of a surprise to see her making a winning debut over 1200 metres. But Anton Marcus rides, and I make the statement again, when he gets on the back of first-timers in juvenile races, you can be rest assured he's done some work at home and he's well pleased with their work at home. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, and she's by Duke of Marmalade out of Cap and Cat, as you said, st staying pedigree. Cap and Cat, I think Savannah Cat, and there's a couple of others, a good family that. Uh, interesting, yeah. Uh, not to say that she can't win over the 1200, but certainly bred for much, much further. So huge respect for Fearless Kitty, and we must watch the betting market, as you say, to see if there's any follow through there. Just going back to Tinder Dry, Fanny Bronkhorst's horse. Tinder Dry ran second to Fisher King, and in the first race, coming in hot, ran third to Fisher King. So we'll have a lovely line with that run. You know, we'll, let's see how coming in hot performs in the first race. So we'll be able to, to, to you know, make a more more, uh, what's the word? Uh, informed. Informed, that's it. Thank you for your help. More informed decision about Tinder Dry come race time. So we must watch that form line, that Fisher King form line with Tinder Dry and coming in hot. Uh, Miss Putin, one that we haven't touched on. Uh, I know that she's returning off 101 day rest. We're going to be talking to uh, Sterling Miller from the team a, a little bit later. It was a very, very good debut. was a nice debut. He's got a couple in here, obviously. He's got, uh, he's got Miss Putin, he's got Giggle and Talk, and, of course, the well-respected number 13, Civil Rights. So it's going to be interesting when you chat to him as to which he thinks is the better of the three. Uh, Miss Putin, certainly plenty of scope for improvement. Uh, the fact that a juvenile has been rested since its debut is not a bad thing. Given a chance to get over its first run, give it a chance to develop give it a, long to come, a chance to come along the right way. So that doesn't faze me at all. But it's a very tricky race because there are lots of them with claims amongst the previously race runners. There's lots with claims on pedigree. Four perfect appeal is not in the betting at this stage, but it's got a quick pedigree, being by a two-year-old daughter of Crusade out of a mare by Captain L. Muzieni teaming up with Nady Cotton. So if there's any money for that, I would have big respect for that one as well. So... You can have the last word. How are you going to play the place accumulator? 
Graham, yeah, it's a place accumulator, I'm going to take two perms, or two, uh, yeah, two perms. The first one, I'm going to bank a rock on filly, and the other one, I'm going to include a couple of horses, rock on filly, fearless kitty, the unknown, uh, seven, tinder dry, and eight, Miss Putin, and 13, civil rights. So I'm going banker in the one, and quite a couple of horses in the other. I think we're going to be set for the first and second race, some thrilling finishes. Right, that's it then. Race two, a juvenile plate. So there are winners against maidens over 1,200 metres. First leg of the PA, deal for 13.35.